Mia Callahan stepped off the transport shuttle, her gaze sweeping across the sprawling campus of the Galactic Integration Academy on Zolaris. The air was fragrant with the sweet, unfamiliar scents of alien flora, a stark contrast to the industrial odors of Earth. Her fellow students, a colorful array of beings from across the galaxy, murmured among themselves as they noticed the new arrival. Hey, look, nudged a tall, slender figure to his companion, a stocky being with shimmering skin. That's the human I was telling you about. They come from a death world. The stocky student, named Zorax, glanced over with visible interest. Really? I thought they'd look... fiercer. Excuse me. Mia approached them, extending a hand, an Earth gesture she hoped would translate well enough. I'm Mia, and yeah, from Earth. First time off it, actually. I'm Thalen, the tall student replied, taking her hand with a pair of his forearms. And this is Zorax. We were just curious about... Your planet, Zorax finished, clearly trying to maintain diplomatic tact. We've heard it's quite... intense. Mia chuckled. Intense is one way to put it. But it's home. What about you guys? Where are you from? Cyrene, Thalen replied. It's mostly water, peaceful, no land predators, nothing like your wild earth. And I'm from Crichton, Zorax added. High gravity, low conflict. It's pretty calm. As they spoke, a more reserved figure approached the group, his eyes locked curiously on Mia. He introduced himself as Varek, from Zaldoria. I've read about Earth, he said, his tone analytical. Your species has a rather violent history. Is it true you have wars just for resources? Mia sighed, knowing this was a common perception. Yes, unfortunately, but there's more to us than conflict. Like any planet, there are good parts too. Such as? Varek prodded, genuinely curious but skeptical. Well, the diversity for one, Mia began, both in our environment and cultures. It's what makes us strong, our ability to adapt and overcome whatever comes our way. The conversation was interrupted by the Academy's welcome bot, a cheerful drone that hovered into view. Welcome, students, it chimed. Please follow me to the auditorium for your orientation. As they walked, Thalen leaned closer to Mia. You'll have to tell us more about these survival skills of yours, he whispered, half-joking. Mia smiled, feeling a bit more at ease. Only if you guys share some of your peaceful tricks in return. It's my first time living without having to look over my shoulder. Deal. Zorax laughed, and even Varek's lips twitched into a reluctant smile. They entered the auditorium, finding seats together. As the lights dimmed, Mia felt the weight of countless eyes on her, not just from her new friends, but from other students too. Zolaris was a new world, a chance for her to prove that there was more to a death worlder than just tales of danger and survival. Here, she could forge a new path, perhaps one that could show the galaxy the strength of her home without the shadow of its perils. The orientation began, a series of holographic displays showcasing the Academy's values of unity and learning. Mia listened, but her thoughts were on the challenge ahead. Would she fit in here, in this galaxy of peace and diplomacy, with her background of Earth's wild and untamed lands? Only time would tell, but for now, she was ready to face whatever came her way with a newfound group of friends who were ready to learn from her as much as she was from them. As Mia settled into her first week at the Galactic Integration Academy, she quickly realized that her classes would be more than just academic hurdles. They were stages for cultural exchange. Nowhere was this more evident than in her xenobiology class, taught by Professor Laris, a renowned scientist from the botanical world of Florea. Today we'll explore the biodiversity of your home planets, Professor Laris announced, his voice echoing softly in the amphitheater-like classroom. Each of you will share something unique from your world. Let's start with Mia. Earth is known for its robust ecosystems. Can you share an example? Mia stood, feeling the eyes of her classmates on her. Sure, she began, her voice steady. One of the most iconic creatures from Earth is the tiger. It's a top predator, known for its strength in striking orange and black stripes. A hologram flickered to life beside her, displaying a majestic tiger moving silently through a dense forest. Murmurs filled the room as students leaned forward, fascinated by the creature that seemed so different from the non-predatory beings of their own worlds. Wow, it's beautiful but looks quite dangerous, Thalen commented, genuinely impressed. It is, Mia agreed, but it's also endangered due to habitat loss and other human impacts. Part of what we study on Earth is how to conserve such species while balancing ecosystem needs. Professor Laris nodded appreciatively. 
a valuable lesson in biodiversity and conservation. Thank you, Mia. Next, let's hear from Zorax. Zorax described the gentle, floating creatures of Crichton, which drifted in the high-gravity atmosphere, feeding on mineral-rich clouds. The class was intrigued by the stark contrast between Earth's fierce tigers and Crichton's serene floaters. As the session continued, Varek finally took the floor. On Zaldoria, we focus on technological harmony with nature. Our cities are built around natural energy vortexes, harnessing power without damaging our environment. He showed images of sleek, luminous structures, elegantly coexisting with the Zaldorian landscapes. Mia was struck by the beauty and efficiency of it, realizing how different it was from the often harsh methods used on Earth. After the presentations, the group gathered outside the classroom, buzzing with thoughts. Mia, your tiger, could it really take down a creature twice its size? Thalen asked, a mix of disbelief and curiosity in his voice. Yes, their strength is incredible. Survival on Earth often means being very strong or very smart, Mia explained, her eyes lighting up with a mix of pride and a hint of sadness for the hardships her homeworld faced. Varek, ever the skeptic, chimed in. But how do you ensure such a creature does not upset the balance of your ecosystems? It seems like a fine line. It's a very fine line, Mia admitted. We have national parks and reserves, and a lot of legislation aimed at protection. But it's an ongoing struggle. The balance is always shifting. As they walked towards the cafeteria, the conversation shifted to the philosophical. Do you think beings from peaceful worlds are less adaptable? Zorax wondered aloud, glancing towards Mia for her opinion. Maybe not less adaptable, Mia considered his question. But different environments forge different strengths. On Earth, we have to adapt quickly to survive. Here, perhaps the skills are more about cooperation and understanding, a different kind of adaptation. That's a thoughtful way to put it, Thalen nodded. It's about what challenges you face and how you respond to them. Their discussion deepened as they reached the cafeteria, talking not just about the physical aspects of their worlds, but also the ethical and philosophical implications of their environments. Mia felt a growing sense of camaraderie with her classmates, realizing that despite their differences, there was a shared curiosity and a desire to learn from one another that bridged any gaps. This academic and cultural exchange marked just the beginning of Mia's journey at the academy one that promised to be as rich and diverse as the ecosystems of Earth she so cherished. Mia's early days at the Galactic Integration Academy were marked by a blend of curiosity and skepticism from her peers about her Death World background. When the Academy announced a survival challenge simulation, it presented the perfect opportunity for Mia to demonstrate the skills that earned Earth its daunting reputation. This was her chance to shift perceptions and perhaps even win over the skeptics, including Varek. Today, You'll all face environments designed to test your adaptability, announced Professor Laris as the students gathered around the holographic simulator. From harsh deserts to dense forests, let's see how well you manage. Mia stood beside Thalen and Zorax, tightening her survival gear. Varek approached, his expression a mix of intrigue and doubt. I've read about Earth's harsh conditions, Varek said, eyeing Mia. I'm curious to see how well that translates here. Mia smiled confident yet friendly. It's one thing to read about it, another to experience it. Ready to see Earth's skills in action? The challenge began in a simulated desert environment, arid and unforgiving. While many of the students struggled with navigation and heat management, Mia moved with purpose and efficiency, using her knowledge to fashion sunshields from the materials provided and finding the optimal paths through the dunes. As they progressed to a jungle simulation, Mia's expertise became even more evident. She led a small group, including Thalen and Zorax, showing them how to identify safe drinking water and create shelters from the dense foliage. You make it seem so simple, Thalen marveled as he watched Mia construct a water collection system using large leaves. It's about using what you have wisely, Mia explained. On Earth, you learn to be resourceful because you often have no other choice. Varek, observing from a distance, found himself grudgingly impressed. He joined Mia's group his curiosity overtaking his skepticism. How do you determine which plants are safe? He asked, genuinely interested. It's knowledge passed down, sometimes learned the hard way, Mia replied, showing him a leaf. See this? It's similar to what we have on Earth. Certain patterns usually indicate toxicity. The simulation moved to its final phase, a temperate forest with hidden dangers. Mia navigated the terrain with a calm focus, her actions teaching her peers more about Earth's rigorous natural training ground than any story could. 
As the simulation concluded, the students gathered, many looking worn but exhilarated. Varric approached Mia, a thoughtful look on his face. I have to admit, I underestimated the practicality of your skills. It's clear there's a lot we can learn from you, he conceded, extending his hand in a gesture of respect. Mia accepted his handshake, pleased. And I'm here to learn from you all too. It's about sharing knowledge, right? The day ended with students chatting animatedly about their experiences. Mia had not only showcased her capabilities, but had also fostered a deeper understanding among her classmates. They realized that her survival skills were not just about combating danger, but about adapting to and respecting one's environment, a valuable lesson for all, regardless of their planetary origin. After the success of the survival simulation, Mia's reputation as a capable death worlder was solidified among her classmates. Her blend of earth-grown practicality and adaptive skills made her an intriguing figure in the academy. The true test of her abilities, however, came unexpectedly during a field trip designed to study the local ecosystems of Zolaris. As the students disembarked from the academy's transport, Professor Laris briefed them on the day's objective. Today, we'll be cataloging the flora and fauna of Zolaris's northern forests. Remember, while Zolaris is mostly peaceful, it's still a wild planet with its own dangers. Mia, along with Thalen, Zorax, and Varek, grouped together as they ventured into the lush, verdant underbrush. The forest was alive with the sounds of distant creatures and rustling leaves, a stark contrast to the controlled environments they were used to. Mia, does this remind you of Earth? Thalen asked, scanning the canopy with keen interest. Somewhat, Mia replied, her eyes alert. It's quieter than most Earth forests, less hostile, but always be aware. Danger isn't always loud. As they moved deeper into the woods, taking notes and samples, a sudden rustling from above caught their attention. A large, shadowy figure leapt from the tree line, landing squarely in their path. The creature, native to Zolaris but rarely seen, stood taller than Mia, with gleaming eyes and a stance that spoke of power. The group froze, except Mia, who stepped forward calmly, her hands raised in a non-threatening manner. Stay back, she instructed her peers. It's a Galanthar. They're usually non-aggressive unless provoked. How do you know? Varric whispered, his usual skepticism overtaken by concern. I read up on the local wildlife after the simulation, Mia explained quietly, keeping her eyes on the Galanthar. It's important to understand potential threats. The Galanthar watched them intently, its deep growl rumbling through the air. Mia remained still, her heartbeat steady. Slowly, she reached into her pack, pulling out a piece of fruit she had packed earlier. Gently, she tossed it to the side. The Galanthar's eyes followed the arc of the fruit, and after a tense moment, it ambled towards the offering, allowing the group a chance to slowly retreat. Once they were at a safe distance, the adrenaline began to fade, and Mia turned to see her classmates' wide eyes. Mia, that was incredible, Zorak said, his voice filled with newfound respect. You just saved us. Varric nodded in agreement, his analytical mind processing the encounter. Your preparedness and calm just proved how valuable your skills are, even on a peaceful planet. Mia smiled, relieved. On Earth, we learn to respect nature, how to coexist with it without causing harm. It's lessons like these that I hope to share with all of you. The rest of the field trip proceeded without incident, but the encounter with the Galanthar became a pivotal moment for the group. They had witnessed firsthand the practical application of Mia's Earth-taught survival skills in a real-world scenario not just in simulations. The experience bonded them further, as they realized that no matter the origin world, the lessons from Earth had universal value, especially when taught by someone who lived them every day. Following Mia's encounter with the Galanthar, her classmates were eager to delve deeper into Earth's rich and tumultuous history, particularly the aspects of human conflict and the quest for peace. The Academy organized a special session focusing on historical interstellar conflicts inviting Mia to share insights from Earth's perspective. In a lecture hall filled with students from diverse planetary backgrounds, Mia stood confidently at the podium, prepared to shed light on Earth's darker yet instructive past. Next to her sat Thalen, Zorax, and Varric, who had become her close confidants and supporters. The audience was silent, their attention fixed on Mia as she began her presentation. Good afternoon, everyone, Mia started, her voice clear and resonant. Today, I'm here to talk about Earth's history of warfare, but more importantly, how these conflicts have shaped our commitment to peace and understanding. She clicked the remote, 
and images of Earth's past wars, battles, revolutions, and peace treaties flashed on the screen behind her. Earth is known as a death world, not just for its environmental dangers, but also for its history of intense, often global conflicts, she explained. Mia described several significant wars from Earth's history, highlighting the human cost and the lessons learned. These wars were devastating, but they also pushed us to develop stronger systems of governance and diplomacy. We strive to learn from each conflict, aiming to prevent future ones. The students listened, rapt, as Mia detailed the establishment of Earth's United Nations, an entity born from the desire to prevent the horrors of global war from recurring. Varek, who had always been skeptical, raised his hand. Mia, how do you reconcile these aggressive tendencies with the peace efforts you mention? Is the balance difficult to maintain? Mia nodded thoughtfully. It's a challenge, Varric. On Earth, we constantly battle between our survival instincts and our higher aspirations. It's an ongoing process, but one thing is clear. Our diversity, which once divided us, now is our greatest strength in diplomacy. We've learned that collaboration, despite our differences, leads to better outcomes for all. The discussion opened up with students asking questions and sharing perspectives from their own worlds, which had largely known peace. Mia listened and responded, fostering a dialogue that highlighted both Earth's uniqueness and the common desires for peace shared across civilizations. Thalin leaned over to Mia as the session drew to a close, whispering, You've really opened our eyes, Mia. Earth's history is harsh, but the lessons are invaluable. As the students filed out, many lingered to thank Mia or to ask more questions. It was clear that her tales had moved them, painting a complex picture of humanity, flawed yet fundamentally striving for peace. Mia felt a surge of pride and responsibility. She realized that her role at the Academy was not just to educate others about Earth's survivalist nature, but also to bridge understanding between vastly different cultures through shared struggles and triumphs. The session not only solidified her status as a respected member of the academic community, but also as a pivotal figure in promoting interstellar understanding and peace. Following the impactful session on Earth's history, the atmosphere around the Galactic Integration Academy shifted subtly. Mia's stories of human wars and resilience had sparked a wide range of reactions, from admiration to unease. Some students began to view her as a symbol of a fighter spirit, while others worried about the implications of such a tumultuous history integrated into their peaceful academic environment. During a casual gathering in the campus common area, Mia, Thalen, Varek, and Zorax discussed the mixed reactions. It's strange, Mia mused, looking around at the small clusters of students engaged in hushed conversations. Back on Earth, being tough and ready was always seen as necessary, admirable even. Here it feels like it's almost intimidating. Varek nodded, his analytical mind piecing together the cultural differences. It's the contrast, he offered. Most of us come from worlds where conflict is historical, not active. The idea that one must constantly be prepared for battle is a challenging concept. Thalen, always the peacemaker, added, Maybe it's not just about preparation for battle, Mia. It's about preparation for any challenge. That's something all can relate to here. Zorax, who had been quietly listening, finally spoke up. But there's more curiosity than fear, Mia. People are drawn to your stories and your strength. Maybe this is an opportunity to explore what makes us different and how those differences can benefit us all. Encouraged by their words, Mia decided to host a series of informal meetups, which she called Cultural Exchange Evenings. The first event focused on sharing survival skills, not just from Earth, but from other worlds too. Each participant was invited to bring techniques and stories from their home planets, fostering a deeper understanding of one another's backgrounds. The event was a success, drawing a diverse crowd eager to learn and share. Mia demonstrated some basic survival knots and how to read natural signs for navigation, which fascinated her peers who were used to relying more on technology. As the weeks passed, these gatherings grew in popularity, turning into a cornerstone of campus life. However, not all reactions were positive. A small faction of students began to express concerns that focusing too much on survivalist skills might invite a culture of fear and aggression into their peaceful educational retreat. One evening, as Mia walked back from a particularly well-attended session, she was approached by a group of concerned students. Mia, we appreciate what you're trying to do, one of them began. But isn't all this focus on survival techniques a bit much? This is a place of learning, not a military academy. 
Mia took a moment to respond, choosing her words carefully. I understand your concerns. It's not my intention to turn our academy into a battleground. These skills are a part of my heritage, and sharing them is my way of contributing to our community. But it's about more than survival. It's about resilience in all forms, emotional, intellectual, and physical. Seeing that her explanation was met with mixed feelings, Mia suggested a compromise. How about we broaden the scope of our next gatherings? We can include more cultural activities, music, art, and more from each of our worlds. Survival is just one aspect of our diverse backgrounds. The group agreed tentatively, and Mia felt a measure of relief. Balancing her identity as a death worlder with the peaceful ethos of the academy was more complex than she had anticipated, but she was determined to find a way to bridge the gap between fear and admiration, showing that Earth's lessons could indeed harmonize with the values of her new academic home. Mia's efforts to integrate Earth's survivalist culture with the academic and peaceful ethos of the Galactic Integration Academy were beginning to bear fruit. The cultural exchange evenings had become a staple of campus life, celebrated for their rich diversity and educational value. However, the sense of unity and progress was abruptly challenged. One morning, as the academy was bustling with the usual pre-class activity, an urgent announcement crackled through the campus-wide communication system. Attention all students and faculty, the voice of the dean sounded grave. We have received credible intelligence that an aggressive alien fleet, known as the Draconis Coalition, is advancing towards Zolaris. Their intentions appear hostile, and an attack may be imminent. The news sent a ripple of shock and fear through the student body. Zolaris, known for its peaceful nature and diplomatic relations, was ill-prepared for any form of military assault. The students, from worlds where conflict was a distant memory, found themselves facing a potential danger they were only used to hearing about in Mia's stories. In the chaos that ensued, Mia's leadership was suddenly more crucial than ever. She found herself surrounded by panicked students, including Thalen, Zorax, and Varric, who looked to her for guidance. Mia, what do we do? Thalen asked, his voice tense. Gathering her composure, Mia responded, We need to stay calm and think strategically. We're not soldiers, but we are survivors. Let's use our training and knowledge to protect ourselves and the Academy. Mia proposed that they use the Academy's simulation chambers, typically used for educational purposes, to quickly train students in basic defensive tactics. Varric, usually the skeptic, nodded in agreement. It's a good plan, Mia. Your knowledge of Earth's military history might be what saves us now. With the Dean's approval, Mia and her friends began organizing the students into groups, each headed by those who had demonstrated aptitude in the survival simulations. Mia took the lead in teaching basic defensive strategies, repurposing her Earth-derived survival skills for protection and evasion. As they trained, sensors detected the approaching fleet. The atmosphere was tense, each student grappling with the reality of the impending conflict. Mia continued to circulate among the groups, offering encouragement and adjusting plans as needed. Remember, she instructed, the goal is to avoid conflict if possible, and protect one another. Stick to the plan, and keep communication open. The preparations went into the night, with makeshift defenses set up around key points of the campus. Mia, standing with Thalen, Zorax, and Varric, watched as the first signs of the Draconis fleet appeared in the sky. Her heart raced, but her voice was steady as she gave out last-minute instructions through her communicator. As the first ships landed, the academy braced itself. Mia's group was among the first to encounter the invaders, using non-lethal tactics to incapacitate and evade rather than engage directly. The training paid off, and many students were able to use their diverse abilities to create barriers, illusions, and other non-violent means to confuse and delay the attackers. Through the chaos, Mia's voice over the comm system provided a constant source of calm and direction. Her ability to adapt her Earth-taught strategies to the peaceful principles of Zolaris helped keep casualties to a minimum and even impressed some of the invaders, who were not used to encountering resistance of this nature. As dawn broke over Zolaris, the Draconis Coalition, frustrated and unable to secure a foothold, began to withdraw. The Academy had stood its ground, not through traditional warfare, but through ingenuity, unity, and the unconventional tactics that Mia had taught. Breathing a sigh of relief, Mia looked around at her peers, her heart swelling with pride at their courage and resilience. The battle had tested them all, and while it was a victory they never wanted, it was one that proved the strength of their unity and the value of their diverse backgrounds. 
As the first light of dawn filtered through the trees of Zolaris, the campus of the Galactic Integration Academy lay eerily silent, the night's conflict a stark contrast to its usual tranquility. The invading Draconis coalition had retreated, outmaneuvered not by brute force but by the strategic, non-violent resistance organized by Mia and her fellow students. The academy had survived, but the landscape of student life and their sense of security would never be the same. Mia walked through the campus grounds with Thalen, Zorax, and Varric, surveying the makeshift defenses that had been crucial in the defense efforts. The remnants of optical illusions, energy barriers, and non-lethal traps were a testament to the ingenuity and unity of the student body. She felt a deep sense of pride, but also a somber reflection on the cost of their victory. It's over, but it feels like everything's changed, Thalen remarked, looking around at the quiet buildings. It has, Mia agreed. But maybe that's not all bad. We've shown that even in a place of learning, where peace is the curriculum, we can stand up to protect it. Varric, who had been quietly contemplative, nodded. I used to think your war stories were just that, stories. But now I see the practical side of what you brought to us. Your history prepared you for this in ways we couldn't imagine. As they continued their walk, the dean of the academy, accompanied by several faculty members, met them. His expression was one of grave relief. Mia, your leadership last night was invaluable. You and your team saved many lives. Mia felt a humble acceptance of his praise. Thank you, sir. It was a group effort. Everyone played a part. The dean smiled warmly. Indeed. And now we must think about the future. This attack has shown us that even in our secluded corner of the galaxy, we are not immune to conflict. We need to be better prepared, and Mia, I'd like you to help us shape that preparedness program. Mia was taken aback, honored by his trust. I'd be glad to help. I think there's a lot we can do to blend our cultural strengths into a comprehensive defense strategy. As discussions of future safety measures unfolded, Mia proposed integrating a curriculum component that focused on peaceful defense strategies, drawing from the various cultures and technologies present within the student body. Her idea was met with enthusiastic approval, setting the stage for a new chapter in the Academy's history. In the following weeks, the Academy transformed. Mia led workshops that taught not just survival tactics, but how to create defensive strategies that adhered to the principles of peace and preservation of life. Her earthborn resilience merged seamlessly with the technological prowess of her peers from other worlds, creating a hybrid defense doctrine that was both effective and ethical. The semester drew to a close with a ceremony commemorating the unity and bravery displayed during the crisis. Mia stood among her friends, her heart full as she looked out over the crowd of faces no longer just classmates, but comrades. We've all learned a lot this year, Mia addressed the gathering, her voice strong and clear, about ourselves, about each other, about what it means to stand together. Let's carry these lessons forward, not just to defend ourselves, but to build a community that exemplifies the best of all our worlds. The applause that followed was filled with a renewed sense of purpose and optimism. As the students dispersed, Mia felt a profound connection to Zolaris and its people. She had come to this academy as a stranger from a distant, feared world. Now she stood as a leader, a friend, and a unifier, not just a survivor of a death world, but a beacon of hope for a new era of galactic peace and cooperation. As Mia, Thalen, Zorax, and Varric walked back to their dorms, they knew the true battle had been for understanding and acceptance, a battle they had won together.